Alpine climbing is the practice of finding a balance between survival and the summit. The safest option would be to stay home. But for my partners and me, the attraction of the big mountains is strong and we are drawn to their flanks to experience their majesty and misery up close. After three months of attempting the unclimbed peak Lynxar, it was our final try and the storm's snow was pouring over me. The decision to bail was an easy one. I was there with Chris Wright, my dear friend and climbing partner. We had been on many high peaks together, but this one had defeated us. Two days later, we staggered back into base camp and were greeted by our other partner, Steve Swenson, my climbing mentor and one of the world's most experienced Karakoram alpinists. He had wisely stayed behind on our final attempt. We'd achieved the primary goal of the expedition, to survive. But I knew deep down that I would return to face the still unknown challenges hidden high above me in the midst of the storm. My name is Graham Zimmerman. I've spent the last 20 years of my life pursuing mountains that push my body and mind to their limits. This has inexorably drawn me to the biggest and steepest mountains in the world, the Karakoram Range. Occasionally, one peak in particular stands out from the others, a lodestar that lures my imagination on countless dream voyages. Its faces appear like remnants of some distant, forgotten realm, a shadowy landscape that vanishes when I wake. In 2015, I had my initial glimpse of Linksar while climbing with Steve. It had been attempted numerous times before, but the steep climbing and objective hazards had kept anyone from reaching its summit. Its seracs loomed above a deep valley and I could imagine the spectacle of destruction whenever they crashed. Still, I thought I could trace a route through the steep ribs and dark buttresses. Steve had seen the same line, and in his opinion, it was one of the last great unclimbed peaks hidden amongst one of the hardest to reach corners of the range. And he should know, he had tried it before, Once again, I started training. We decided to invite a fourth to the team, Mark Ritchie, a legend among American alpinists and one of Steve's longtime partners. His addition seemed to create a balance between the power of youth and the wisdom of age. After two years of training and preparation, We were stepping away from our homes and families for another three-month expedition. Farther up the valley, Linksar was still hidden from view in a dark whirl of clouds. How does it feel to be back? It feels awesome. It feels like we weren't really gone for very long. Like We just left left here yesterday. Now we're going to go back. Hell yeah. Unfinished business. Things are remarkably snowy. Things look a lot different. According to local residents, the Karakoram had experienced one of the snowiest winters on record. In base camp, we quickly grew accustomed to the din of huge avalanches. We needed to wait, but there was plenty of work to do setting up advanced base camp. A simple stumble was all it took to put my expedition into jeopardy. I kind of screwed up today. I, uh, I sprained, sprained, I think I sprained my ankle pretty badly. I was grounded while my partners made progress. Uh, Graham has fucked up his ankle. How does that make you guys feel? Sad. Concerned. 
I am in one of the most amazing mountain venues on the planet, surrounded by unclimbed peaks, and I have a fucking sprained ankle. This is unbelievable. It's, you know, it's, it's just a reminder that everything has consequences up here. I was impatient, but eventually I made it to our advanced base camp and started to catch up on acclimatization. My ankle is getting better. I am terribly excited about this. Glimmers of blue ice and gold gray rock emerged below the layers of white. To acclimatize, we started climbing on our route on Linksar. We spent almost a month really just getting to the point where we could establish our advanced base camp and we're starting to push higher on the mountain, but as we came back, big avalanche from the call way above us came down and reminded us that there's still a lot of snow up there and we need to be patient. Um, yeah, it's just a good data point to kind of like, you know, uh, crank up the levels of suspicion about the mountain and the conditions it's in. Scared me. Made me feel uh, like uh, we gotta be very careful. for it. I have my headlamp on in the daytime. We're making our way up to camp one. We're actually making progress on the mountain. We found our former passage through icy rock corners and steep snow mushrooms. At times, the familiar route vanished under the drifts. Then I'd recognize a particular seam or edge, and I'd find myself moving in accustomed ways as memories reemerged from two years before. I noticed how much the thin air had already started to slow us. Our bodies moved sluggishly, as if underwater. Beyond our previous high point, winding crests of snow and ice twisted around steep outcrops of rock and vanished into the unknown. We turned back towards our advanced base camp and the summit felt desperately far away. Well, if there was uh, any question, the weather is definitely bad right now. I knew that attaining the summit didn't matter, that the risks I undertook were meaningless, but that seemingly inaccessible point also meant everything to me and to those with me. On July 30th, a message notified us that good weather was on its way. And my ankle was ready for action. It was time to make a bid for the summit. As we started to climb, we moved faster. Our bodies were more habituated to the thin air. Hell yeah. Here we are, camp two. A serac barrier reared over our heads. I tried to picture how we'd surmount its concave ice in the 6,000 meter air. The next day, however, Mark and Chris discovered a path forward. Fucking huge. Yeah, baby! Hey. I relaxed into the steady cadence of ice tool placements and cramp on kicks into the soft ice. Yeah. 
soon, I could feel moisture gathering in the air. Clouds started to close in around us. We hunkered in, individually tense, relying on our collective confidence. The forecast called for a clearing. Instead, the storm tightened its grasp. All right, guys, it's getting better. Oh, yeah. This is good. Finally, the sun came up and the clouds cleared. The morning light sparkled amid a dusting of snow that floated across the air. Nice, Steve. Once more, we headed up. The ice above our snow cave was some of the best I'd experienced in the mountains. With just a single swing, my axis stuck. That was fun. Then the firm surface gave way to seemingly fathomless drifts. I looked down at my partners. The mountain face plunged for nearly 3,000 meters into the depths of the valley. All right. Camp four. This mountain's been really serious and hard, but man, it's paying off. We're getting up here and we're psyched. How you feeling, Mark? Feeling good. It's all happening. It's happening now. So close, it's right there. This is good. We're making our way up this mountain. I was in the lead, with the summit in sight, when suddenly, all my greatest fears were realized. An avalanche swept me off my feet, and I tumbled more than 30 meters into the void. I hung from the ropes, unable to hear my partners. Can I dog or it? Fuck. Okay. The guys are helping me figure this out. I am surrounded by slabby rock and shitty ice. And I uh, am not injured. I think I just took like a probably 100 foot fall. My ropes are here. I'm getting set up to chug back up. Two hours later, I was back with my team. Unbelievable. I had just taken a huge fall at 6,900 meters on a giant unclimbed peak. I'm cold, I'm scared, I'm shocky, but well, these guys gave permission. I said, listen, I'm not injured. Let's go to the top. Let's do it. We continued up. <coughs> High on the mountain, the differences between our ages had blurred. Yeah, Mark. Our separate experiences had merged into one well of knowledge. The summit was now just 20 meters above us. Chris handed the lead to Mark for the final overhanging snow pitch. After all that, we're on the final pitch to the summit. I arrived last, and we simply screamed at the mountains around us. All right, guys, we're on top. This feels good. Can't fucking believe it! Oh, yeah. All right, now we're gonna get
get the fuck out of here safely. The descent took us three days. <coughs> After nine days on the mountain, we made it safely back to our advanced base camp. The expansive love that I felt for my partners and the experience should have been enough to sustain a full existence. But amid the blur of exhaustion, another mountain stood out from the vast panoramas. And I knew, yet again, that I would return. <laughs>